welcome to Art Is. Today we're going to take you into the heart of Slovakia, to explore castles and a manor house, all in search of uncovering the unknown treasures of Slovakia. You may be wondering, where is Slovakia? Slovakia was recently part of what we know as Czechoslovakia. Today on Art Is, we will take you throughout Slovakia on a visual tour to experience the lush natural beauty of its mountains and valleys, the rich cultural heritage, and we'll take you into Košice, the second largest city in Slovakia, to learn about how they are restoring their main street to its original beauty. After the fall of communism in 1990, the people of Slovakia turned to their past to learn about the importance of their cultural heritage. Culture in Slovakia was shaped by two major forces, the common folk living in the villages and the nobility. First, we're going to take you to look into the lives of the nobility to learn how they influenced the world of the fine arts. The Slovakian nobility was created as a result of feudalism. Nobles became a distinct social and political class probably as early as the 9th century. The nobility was appointed by the monarchs as a way of giving thanks. This is how the Andrasi family achieved their level of success. In the 16th century, Peter Andrasi moved to Slovakia from Transylvania. It was then that he became captain of Krasna Horka Castle which later became property of the family. In 1766, they were given the title of Earls. Here is a copy of the family tree and coat of arms. The Andrasi power also stretched into a small mining village called Betliar. During the 18th century, like all nobility, they enjoyed the thrill of hunting, so they decided to build this manor called Betliar. In these paintings, you can see how it looked in the beginning and after it was rebuilt in the classical style. As you enter the manor, you will see an intricately carved staircase made of mahogany. On the ceiling, you will observe the skilled workmanship of the local craftsmen. We will first go downstairs to visit the family's museum and servants' quarters. The servants' quarters are filled with beautiful beds, chests, and armoires made of rare and exotic woods. Colorful paintings are on the walls. And there is this water stand with its original water basin with the manor's name, Betliar. Now we are entering the Andrasi treasure chamber filled with a well-preserved Eskimo suit, a samurai soldier suit from the 15th century, Here is an exquisite sleigh that the children played in during the winter. They have many fine examples of porcelain and silver. My favorite piece of this collection is an Egyptian mummy dating back to 2000 BC. You can look inside and see the preserved mummy and the lid of the sarcophagus. There are also burial items that were found inside with the mummy. The Andrasi family were also big game hunters. They killed brown bears, elephants, rhinos, and wild boar. Since this was to be a hunting lodge, the majority of all of the artwork betrays the Andrasi family's love of hunting. Upstairs is the picture gallery, 
lined with portraits of the ancestors of the Andrasi family. This is a fine collection of armor from the 16th and 17th century. Here is a model of a knight going into battle. Throughout the room, you can also see the French influence in the mantle with the face of Louis XIV, the Sun King in the center, and the lows used by the ladies. A number of the bedrooms and sitting rooms were filled with 18th century French furniture. Here is the hunting dining room, filled with antlers of antelope telling the stories of their numerous hunting victories. Along the wall is a wood-burning stove, painted with a rural scene. All the rooms in the manor were heated by these porcelain wood stoves. This is the red dining room. On the ceiling is a beautiful painting. The room is filled with excellent examples of Baroque style furniture from the 18th century. The family was very proud of their horses. Throughout the manor, you will see paintings and bronzes of their favorite steeds. The ladies' sitting room is graced with a faux boss relief on the ceiling. The room is also accompanied by an empire-style writing desk used by the ladies. Special rooms were designated for keeping fine porcelains, most of which is Hungarian, dating back to the 18th century. The Turkish room is filled with furniture, paintings, and fabrics from the Middle East. These objects were collected on one of their many trips around the world. This bedroom is enhanced by this Baroque style armoire with painted scenes. The painting over the bed dates back to the 17th century. The manor is filled with paintings of the normal everyday life of the villagers. This is the Rocco style sitting room with paintings of a Venetian princess and a portrait of a noble woman from Marie Therese's court. one of the four modernized bathrooms in the manor. All were decorated with colorful tiles. The library was created to educate the noble children from the area. The furniture dates back to the 19th century. The Venetian chandelier is adorned with colorful glass flowers that almost look like candy. The formal dining room is lined with portraits of famous military leaders and battle scenes. The dining room chairs were each designed so the eye level of each nobleman would be even. The floor is also the only original parquet floor left in the manor. The ornate chest dates back to the 1600s. It's obvious that the Andrasi family appreciated and enjoyed surrounding themselves with fine examples of art. Outside the manor, the family also enjoyed the luxury of having a beautiful park to surround the manor.
One thing is for sure, Koshitsa is taking the renovation of their main street seriously. Everywhere you look, you see buildings being repainted and restored, while the streets are being redone with concrete pavers. In the center of Main Street is the St. Elizabeth's Cathedral, the biggest and most important Gothic monument ever built in Slovakia, and the only one of its kind in Eastern Europe. This medieval monument was built in the High Gothic style. The construction of the present cathedral started by the end of the 14th century and was completed in 1508. The cathedral has gone through two renovations. In the 19th century, and the second restoration began in 1978. Next to the cathedral is the St. Michael's Chapel, built in 1330, and it's the second oldest monument in Košice. The urban tower is from the 14th century and was built in the Renaissance style. The East Slovak Theater was built in the Neo-Baroque style in 1897, The interior of the theater is richly decorated with plaster ornaments. The ceiling with paintings by a Viennese painter, with scenes of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer's Night Dream, and King Lear. My personal favorite on Main Street is the musical fountain. Regardless of the time of day, people from all walks of life are drawn to the rhythms of music and water. At night, the fountain paints a majestic picture of the St. Elizabeth Cathedral and the theater. Not far from the main street is Jacob's Palace, which was built at the turn of the century in neo-Gothic style. Discarded stones from the St. Elizabeth Cathedral were used in its construction. At present, the building serves as the needs of the British Council and is used for social events. Slovakia is a country rich in cultural heritage, springing from the life of the local villagers they show their love for the arts in their dancing, singing, stories, painting on Easter eggs, and their native costume. What Slovakians take the most pride in is the natural beauty of the national parks and mountains. The high Tatras draw in tourists from all over Europe for snow skiing and breathtaking scenery. The Slovakians also take pride in the many castles that fill their native landscapes. Artists visited the ruins of Spitsi, the largest castle in Central Europe, 
dating back to the 12th century. Before 1464, it was the property of Hungarian kings. During the 15th century, the castle was rebuilt, including a Gothic chapel. Inside today, the chapel is an empty shell, supported by Gothic columns. During the second half of the 20th century, an extensive archaeological investigation was conducted, uncovering earthen vessels, cannons, armor, weapons, and iron kettles. Since then, the castle has been partially reconstructed to create a museum to display the found artifacts. As you drive throughout Slovakia, you will see ruins of castles on tops of hills, looking down on ancient villages. The thriving villages are the only living testament to the existence of many of these castles. If there was one word to describe Slovakia, it would be magical. It is a place where people have retained a sense of their ancient past, along with the vision for the future. The future of Slovakia is a place where the family is still the focal point of its society and the arts are a part of their everyday existence. We hope you enjoyed our journey into the heart of Slovakia. Artis would like to thank the sponsors of this program, BCM Engineers and the University of South Alabama. Without their financial support, this program would not have been made possible. The music for today's program was produced by the House of Arts in Košice. To close today's show, we are going to leave you with the musical fountains from downtown Košice. We'll see you next week. On Art Is.